Hello and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. My name is Jane and I am coming to you from Hornsby Heights, which is north of Sydney in Australia. And the Mindful Making podcast is all about yarn and it's all about knitting and it's all about the joy of making with our hands with yarns and needles. So knitting is my mindfulness practice. Uh, that's where I relax and recharge and that's where I feel grounded. So I knit a lot and I hope to share some of that experience with you. Just the enjo enjoyment and the comfort of the process and then the appreciation and the pride of the final garment. So settle in, probably next half an hour, I will talk about what I've been up to since the last episode back in October. Today it is the 7th of November, it's Sunday. It's slightly raining outside. The family's in the house, so there might be a few noises from them, which is all good. <laughs> um, today, I would like to share three finished objects or actually two because one of them is a secret project so I can't talk too much about that but just to say that it's finished. So uh, a few finished objects and then I have one project on the needles and I have a few dream knitting projects. So settle in, I hope you have a cup of coffee, tea or a wine, whatever you prefer. I have a nice cup of milky coffee. It's still warm. Cheers. I hope you are well and welcome if it's the first time you've found your way here to my channel. I'm so happy you are here. I'm also very pleased and very appreciative if you've come back. So welcome to you all. Velkommen til jer alle sammen, til jer der ser med fra Danmark. So that was just a short greetings for my uh, to my Danish knitting friends. Um, we are a community of knitters from around the world and I'm so pleased that you have decided to tune in to this channel and the interactions that we have through the comments. Um, I enjoy reading them very, very much. And I hope that when you look through the comments as well, that you can see that we are coming from all over the world, from the States, from New Zealand, from Canada, from Scandinavia, from Germany, France, India, all around the globe. So please reach out and connect to the other knitters that uh, you see in the comments. It's good to have a conversation going. Um, this is episode number 34. Yeah, 34. And uh, you can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Facebook, yes, Mindful Making as well. On Ravelry, I'm Mindful Making AU. Let's jump into the finished objects. And one of them is what I am wearing. So this is the Veli Core tea. It's a summer top designed by Andrea Mari. I uh, knitted this in, in Holst Coast yarn, which is a cotton wool blend. It's a light fingering weight um, yarn and these, you know, it's, it's quite muted um, subtle coloring and I over dyed these yarns with uh, some avocados. Let me stand up so you can see uh, how it looks on the body. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really pleased with how it turned out. 
This is a size two in the pattern. Uh, and I think my gauge is slightly tighter. No, it is slightly looser than in the pattern. So I had 28 stitches where the pattern says not 29. I think now I'm just looking down to see my notes. Um, it is a, you know, it's basically a square or rectangle and you then, you know, split for sleeves up and bind off for, for the neckline. So very simple. And then it has these, this beautiful texture. Uh, and there is every, you know, there is a bit of a darker color in the stripe. It's very hard to see though in this light. I used for the body a, a three millimeter needle and a 2.5 millimeter for the ribbing at the hem and here as a trim around the um, sort of armhole opening or armhole. And um, I have used 1300 meters for, for this, this jumper. It weighs uh, 180 grams and just showing these, uh, this is what I've left of the, um, of the two darkest colors or the medium and then the darkest here. And then the, um, the main color is all gone in, you know, 100 gram. It's gone of that one. It was a lot of knitting. It took a lot of time, many stitches, and when working in the round to creating these sort of garter, garter texture, every single round was a pearl round. If I would knit this again, I think I would knit it in pieces. So in two pieces, back and front, knitting it flat. So I could just um, do garter stitch the thing is that the, um, I can't see that, but you have here the nice detail of, of one of these um, small cables being the side seam. But then if you do it in pieces, there you would just have a seam instead. I think that would work. Um, well, I like, I like it. I like it. I am stretching it a bit. It is quite a, um, you know, flexible fabric. So I try to pull it out just to give it a bit more room. So it's not as boxy and um, roomy as the pattern in the pictures, but I'm happy. I am happy with that. So that's the Bellicor. I have uh, created a Ravelry page so you can read more about it. That was the first finished object. The second finished object is a pair of socks. So here they are. These are the Mica socks and they are designed by Christine Veja, Veja, V-E-J-A-R and they are from the um, 52 Weeks of Socks book. They are for my daughter. She um, decided she chose the yarn which is from bombed yarns and the colorway is called who gives a flying flathead um, it's a 75 merino 25 nylon blend it's very tightly spun the yarn so I expect these socks to wear very well and not peel at all. 
they haven't been worn yet so they've just been sitting here on the blocker um, basically for a month um, so that I could show you guys and now they can move on to the feet of my daughter. We, I were a bit skeptical of whether it was possible to see the the color work with with these um, with this sort of variegated colorful yarn. I chose to hold the um, the contrast color double. That is a coast yarn, and it's the it's just a white uh, white colorway. It's called Ecru. So I held that double just for the colorway to stand out. And I think they've turned out really, really well. There are slip stitches on the heel. It's a heel flap and gusset uh, construction. I have done 64 stitches. And then I think I reduced the foot to 60 stitches. Um, as far as I recall, the pattern is for slightly uh, um, heavier yarn. So I went up a size. I wonder if I did an extra repeat of the pattern. Oh yeah, I'm just trying to remember and I'm looking down to my notes. So I changed the color work repetition. Oh, that was here. So I changed this to every five stitches instead of every eight stitches as in the pattern to um, for, for that to work then with my stitch count. And I think I added an extra section up here, as I said. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy with these. I think the color is beautiful and as i said i'm really looking forward to seeing how the yarn works and how they wear these socks so that's the uh, second finished object of today i do have uh, one more skein of of that yarn and so this is the uh, the other skein. It's beautiful. It's just all the colors together. So maybe this will turn into a Christmas gift for a lucky family member, hopefully, that they find themselves lucky. <laughs> The sock design I haven't decided on yet, but a slight, a tiny bit of lace, I think would be very pretty in this yarn as well. So, um, looking forward to that. That were the finished object that I can show you. I do have another finished object and if you look over my right shoulder over here it is sitting in this pile of uh, finished objects over there so it is this one the greenish turkish jumper that is done and ready only uh, ends to weave in and um, then that can be sent off with a pattern and someday it will be available for you guys as well. But that's the third finished object. If I then look at um, the yarn that I have knitted up in the month of October, again looking down in my little book, uh, so in October I knitted up 1,703 meters of yarn. However, that doesn't include that little beauty over here on my shoulder, which was uh, 2,000 meters going into that. 
jumper it was finished the 1st of november so it will be included in next month um meterage of yarn used it was actually the third time that i've knitted that jumper uh, completely uh, knitted ends woven in and then ripped the back and re-knitted three times um I realized that my initial idea on the design didn't work. It didn't work in that yarn. I think it might work in other yarns with a hair, but a bit more drape. This yarn sort of just, um, it's so bouncy that it has a lot of memory. So it sort of creeps up again and just, you know, reshapes and not, oh, it's hard to explain, not fall the same way or drape the same way. As other yarns because I did uh, I had knitted the original idea up um, in other yarns so a um, super soft held together with a mohair silk mohair and that that drapes quite well um, so that the design idea is not gone yet just won't be in there uh, included in that one over there <laughs> on the needles not very much to be honest um last week i had a bit of slight infection or something um energy down and a bit of sore throat and you know in the ears as well so i wasn't uh, 100 percent but I have started a pair of socks. And I actually do did knit them two at a time on one needle, but then I got to the heel turn and then I couldn't figure out how to work it on, on the same needle. So just these are just waiting. So I have done the uh, heel flap on these. This pair, it is my, um, well, my husband's mother, no, my husband's grandmother's um, sort of sock recipe, if you can call it that, which is a two by two ribbing. Uh, and then that will continue on the top of the foot and then under the foot, it will just be plain stocking it. So these are for one of the male members of the family for Christmas. I haven't decided who. The yarn is, let me just think, a Highland Sock by Holst Garn. And the dark color is charcoal. This is called Marine, the blue, which is a leftover from a an, an previous pe uh, pair of socks. And this in between here, this beautiful brass yellow color is um, a leftover from my Flusi cardigan and it's dyed by Union Fiber in New Zealand. So I thought that would just give a bit of interest on the leg. I may repeat this um, brassy color um, at the toe, just a single round, possibly. I don't know yet. So this is the uh, this is one of the socks. The other is a bit further along. So here I have turned the heel. Oh, and she don't see detail. This is the other pair of socks, and here I have turned the heel. It's similar and when I am back to just knitting the foot, I hope to um, to put them on the same, ne same needle again. So I just keep track of the rounds that I'm knitting so they become similar for each, for the right and left foot are similar. Hmm. 
anyway, these are progressing very well. It does take some time, 68 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter. Um, using the two by two ribbing just gives a really snug fit. And I think this yarn is also very bouncy. So I think this these will wear well as well. Yeah, on my uh, needles, socks again. You know, it's it is, we are approaching Christmas gift knitting time. I think every year I have the ambition of that all members of the family would get a knitted gift. It hasn't happened never yet. And it won't happen this year either. But a few bits and pieces in between that will do and I'm happy with that. So just the bag that I am using for the socks is one of my favorites. It's Mason Vale. It's a, um, you know, from her Leslie, I think she's called, when she do uh, screen printing. So these is, these are actually made of drop cloths. And I just love the randomness, but still um, put together colors used in these bags. Yeah, it's one of my favorite. Yeah. That was what is on my needles. Of course, I am still working on the granny stripe blanket, but it hasn't been touched since last time. So no reason to show you that in this episode. Next, uh, I thought I would share with you some of my dream knitting or what I might have on the needles when the socks are done. I have this pretty skein sitting in my stash. This is a lace weight yarn. It's a blend of 55% merino wool and 45 silk. It's a two ply. There is, I think, 800 meters in one ball or one skein of yarn. This is dyed by uh, Glenhaven Knits. And I have had the sitting for a long time and I have shown you before. And what I want to do is to re-knit, not re-knit, but um, knit another summer breeze tea, which is this one. And I've been, I have worn this on a few of the previous podcasts. I can't remember which the number, but um, many of you have commented or had I have asked for the pattern and I have actually written up no I have calculated the pattern I was actually just before recording I was just checking my documents and my files and I got all um, sweaty and um, sort of out of breath because I couldn't find it but I have I know that I've done the maths so what I want to do is to write up the pattern and and knit a second sample just to ensure that it's right. It is a lace weight garment. Yes, there are plenty of stitches in here in this in this little summer tea, but it's just a beautiful light weight summer tea and i think with for this the yarn just shines and that is that is what i wanted so it's a very very simple round yoke um tea and i just want it yeah to to let the yarn talk actually here it only uses in my size a uh, one skein i did however break in to this second ball here, 
when adding the uh, ribbing for this one. So let's see what I do, whether I unpick this and put in a solid color here. Could be a white or could be a sort of soft pink, just a, yeah, just a solid color here because, you know, it's just a stretch to make it in, in, in one ball of yarn. But I want to do that, should you be in, well, it will take some time, but should you be interested in um, being part of the test knitting group of a lace weight summer tea in stockinette, let me know either in the comments below or send me a direct message on Instagram or an email to Jane dot ballet net b a l l e n e t at gmail.com yeah so i hope to start this one very soon i'm looking very much forward to just you know knitting in the round and uh, retesting rechecking my maths last episode i talked about summer tops and thank you all for your comments and appreciation of the bundle of um, summer top suggestions that is available on my Ravelry page Mindful Making AU and you can go there just to see a selection of summer tops that I've gathered. The summer top that I would like to make from that or there are two that I would like to make from that bundle first I think they're all very pretty. I just can't knit them all in one go. So one of the the, um, the tops that I have laid my eyes on and my almost my hands on is called Scrabby Stri Scrabby Striber, which is Scrabby Stripes, and I have uh, pulled out different. Um, leftovers from my stash that I think could work well together. I don't think I can hold them all in my hand, but let's just see. So some of them would include, so some of the colors that I picked out are these. Then there is a more white and a bit more on a, um, sort of white base with a bit of speckles. I will insert a picture on them sitting here on my desk instead so you can see beautiful colors together so I'm thinking something like that in a round yoke striped uh, jumper summer jumper so let's see when that will um, get to the point sort of on the top of my to-do list and get on the needles. So that's one of my summer top dream knitting projects. The other dream knitting project uh, in the summer top category is the stable linen top designed by Hoki Locatelli. And I'm thinking of using this deep charcoal yarn from my stash. This, uh, as far as I remember, is a blend of merino and cashmere. It could also be cotton and cashmere. And there must be a bit of silk as well to give it that sh sheen or shine. But I'm thinking that, um, so I'll just put up a picture of the design here, that that would be very pretty in this uh, dark charcoal gray so i'm looking forward to that as well if uh, there were just 40 hours a day i could be knitting all the things that i want to do 
you know, I could spend the entire day knitting and I would be thrilled and happy. And what about you? Well, when, if I don't knit a day, it feels like a very strange day. I knit every single day. That keeps me sane and keep me grounded. Keep, and I've said that before. It's a bit like a, um, a necessity for me. Yeah, so that is on my um, list of want to knit one day. Moving on to additions to my yarn collection. I actually try not to add too much to the yarn collection because I want to use what I have. I want to appreciate, appreciate what is already there and not necessarily be, you know, new shiny thing syndrome. Uh, the latest addition is what you see up there, the black box, and it's an advent calendar. Let me just insert an unboxing video where you can see what is in store for me during December. So each day a mini skein and then a 100 gram skein um, at the end. The advent calendar is from Natural Fiber Arts and I'm looking very much forward for December 1st. It is the first time that I've treated myself to an advent calendar. My son said when he saw the price, it is a bit pricey, but um, it was sort of a treat after a lockdown where we haven't spent much money, we hadn't gone anywhere. I thought that was a very, very good excuse to, um, to give, to order and have that treat waiting for me for December. So my my uh, my youngest son he said, "Wow, that's an, a very expensive advent calendar." Yeah, it is a bit expensive, but um, so much more the joy I think. So um, let me see if I do. Um, I can't. I won't promise that I would do daily uh, short vlogs of just showing the yarn, but in um, here on the channel. I will show you when I have it fully opened and you can see the, how pretty they are. And it was uh, really temp tempting to just start opening them to see what was in there. But I will wait till 1st of December and, that, and then just enjoy that daily excitement and thrill of open, opening each of the small bags. Otherwise, I think that's it for the yarn and knitting related content. I forgot to say that everything that I have mentioned in this episode, you can find links to in the description box below. I think I also forgot to say that the Scrabby Strieber is designed by Pia from 50 Fabulous. She also have a um, a podcast. She podcasts in Danish and in English as well. Yeah, so description box below where you can find links to uh, um, yarn and to patterns and to, I've also inserted links to Ravelry pages for the Bellicore tea, for instance, my uh, Ravelry project pages so you can see them there if you're interested. On sort of semi related to yarn and knitting, another work in progress is a finally I am venturing into creating a website. I have paid the fee for the last four years. That is not very well spent money, just sitting there and not doing anything. Finally, I have, um, I bit the bullet and um, acknowledge that I can't do it myself. There are too many, you know, technical things to, well, I just didn't have the capacity 
energy wise and bandwidth up here in the um, in the top on the top floor to figure out how to do it so I have I'm working with Anne-Marie from Chugapec to set up my website she is basically waiting on me to uh, gather pictures and texts and then hopefully soon there will be a website it will be called mindfulmaking.com.au that is where um, the website will host my patterns so you would be able to buy them purchase them there as well as on on Ravelry and then I would have links to all my my um, podcasts and the um, description notes and show notes will sit there as well and who knows what uh, the future will bring um, so that will be my online home where everything is linked together uh, I don't know I have I haven't decided on a release date I just feel that I just have to acknowledge my uh, energy levels and um, capacity in terms of time there's been a lot going on lately both at work and all my other initiatives um, that I've going on outside of work so um, I can't promise but you will be the first to know when it's there so super exciting um, I feel all grown up you know venturing into a website and um, being official and everything so um, stay tuned on live news if we um, go there so you know uh, new south wales opening up so october was just the complete change of news features it was much more about what we can do now compared to previously where it was drama case numbers be careful you know fear-based basically news but now it's much more joy and opportunity based new south wales has opened up for international travel mainly for still mainly for or that's sort of federal and Australian government deciding mainly for Australian citizens and personal personal permanent residents and um, so as soon as we heard the news of borders opening up we booked a ticket for my son so he will arrive from Denmark, he will arrive and celebrate Christmas with us. So he will arrive the 21st of December and staying until the 20th of January. So we will get the joy of, of celebrating the holiday season with him. It's just amazing to be able to do that. I'm looking so much forward to seeing him in person again. Uh, here in uh, in our little family, my youngest son is starting football season again um, in a week's time. So that means I will be back on the sidelines knitting and cheering. So that's good. And he's back at school as well. Um, the last three weeks, I think. It's uh, And he really enjoys catching up with his friends again. My daughter on her uni study has done assignments. She's doing really well and works works hard. Um, she would she is preparing for exams and um, I think she will end. She will be done in in twenty ninth of November for this this semester, and then she would have a break until probably mid February or March. So that's our summer break. And we've booked a holiday home in January. We will go up the coast. Um, so that's, a f I think, the first time in two years we are going away on, on, a, on a holiday. So there's just a lot of good things um, coming up for us. So happy, happy and very um, appreciative of that we are now opening up again a bit of normalcy i was out with a great knitting friends yesterday uh, a knitting friend yesterday for a lovely lovely chat and coffee and brunch it was just so beautiful to be out and just the buzz of people again i hope you are all well 
We are moving into summer. It is heating up, although today it is raining. So I might just uh, uh, stop here and uh, get the video edited so it can be ready for you to watch and then get on with website uh, writing and pattern translations and writing the Summer Breeze Tea pattern as well. Plenty of things to do and hopefully there would also be heaps of time sitting indoors in the rain and just knitting on my socks. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you again next time. Please subscribe, leave a comment. And also, if you want to be notified when the next episode is out, click the little bell and you would be notified. So you don't miss out. I try to record sort of each month. That's all for me. This time, enjoy your yarn, enjoy your projects and wear them with pride. See you next time. Bye bye.